Let's try a second combustion analysis problem. This one is slightly different than the one that we did before, maybe actually a little easier. So again, let's look at the data and analyze it. We've got 1.125 grams of an unknown hydrocarbon. This time our compound contains only two elements, carbon and hydrogen. So it's a little easier in that we don't have to subtract for that third element. Again, it's burned in oxygen, produces a mass of CO2 and a mass of water. Once we find the empirical formula, we're going to use the molar mass of the actual compound to determine the molecular formula. So let's go through and start our calculations. We're going to take our 3.447 grams carbon dioxide. Again, remember, we're going to figure out how many grams of carbon came from our original hydrocarbon and formed this carbon dioxide. 44 grams of carbon dioxide contains one mole of carbon dioxide and one mole of carbon dioxide contains one mole of carbon. This time we're not going to have to go through grams of carbon because we're not going to have to subtract to get a, a third element. So we're going to go straight to moles. When we do this calculation and calculate through for our moles of carbon, we end up with 0 0.07832 moles of carbon. We now use the mass of water to get the moles of hydrogen. So we take our 1.647 grams of water, 18 grams of water in one mole of water, and one mole of water contains two moles of hydrogen. Punching this into our calculator gives us 0 0.1828 moles of hydrogen. So as we take our moles of carbon, our moles of hydrogen, we're then going to find our empirical formula. So let's go back and put in our 0 0.07832 moles of carbon and our 0 0.1828 moles of hydrogen. Then we divide by the smallest value, 0 0.07832. 832, 0.07832 gives us a 1 to 2.33 ratio. We're not going to round this number. We're going to multiply it by 3 in order to turn it into a whole number. So we need to do this to the other uh, value as well. So that gives us a 3 to 7 ratio. Our empirical formula would then be C3 A7. We now have to take that empirical formula and turn it into a molecular formula. Knowing that it is C3 H7 and that the molar mass of the actual compound is 82, excuse me, 86.2 grams per mole. The first thing we do is find the molar mass of the empirical formula. Adding up C3H7 gives us 43.1 grams. We then take the actual compound of 86.2 grams and divide it by the empirical molar mass and we get what's called the integer multiplier of 2 which means that the actual molecular formula is twice the empirical formula, which would be C6H4. 
14. So this is our actual molecular formula.